This is Jimmy. Hello. So Jimmy is a pro bike mechanic working in Velo Bavarian in Derby, which is a really good little bike shop selling lots of really cool bike brands. My hair looks like Elvis today. In today's video, we're gonna do five essential tools that Jimmy thinks everyone should have at home to help do their own bike mechanics. Number one. Number one, a good pedal spanner or pedal Allen key. So normally pick up these for like a tenner, 15 quid online. And it just the amount of times I hear stories of people catching their knuckles or something on a on their chain set, just get yourself a proper a proper pedal spanner because we always swap in bike, pedals from bike to bike really. So that's five. That's number five. Four. It's not number one. That's that's the fifth most important. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do it that. Fifth way. most important. Okay, number four. Number four, a chain checker. The amount of times I get the you know the. The old, I've, I've not had a chain, I've had a new chain not that long ago. In my opinion, you get roughly 3,000 kilometers out of a, a chain, roughly. If you do more mileage or you put out more power or you don't clean your chain, you get a bit less. But if you just check it every sort of once a month or something, check your chain. The rest of your drivetrain will last longer if you swap your chain every so often. So, yeah. Next. How do we use this? So, this is quite similar to most ones on the internet. There are some fancier ones out there. This is a part tool one, but you can pick one up online that looks almost identical. This is one of the products where I actually think you don't need to go crazy expensive, but the more expensive ones are exactly right. Yeah. Now, if you go for a cheap one, they may have just printed it in a mold that isn't the right length. Um, but in a sense, you'd basically, there's an end with sort of a curvage, to it and then there's an end that's sort of made for going in. Um, I always do it on the top of the chain because the chain is, is at its tightest at the bottom it can be a little bit slacker so you basically hook the little rounded end into one of the link links and this is a brand new chain so it won't go in. They'll normally have two sides so I'll have a, a 0.75 and a 0.5. In a sense 0.5 normally means 50% worn 0.75 normally means 75% worn. That's like sort of yeah, what we sort of work to. There are ones out there that can tell you if it's 100% worn, but normally I like to change it somewhere between that. So if it's if you check it once a month and you think oh it's at 0.5 and that slots in, so that would basically push in. Um, that's when I'm thinking about getting a new chain. If it gets to 75. Um, then I, I will definitely change my chain. If you do that, in my sort of opinion, you normally get roughly four chains then to a cassette. Chains still aren't super duper cheap, but a chain is a lot cheaper than a cassette. You can be spending 200, 250 on some of the 12 speed cassettes, whereas a chain for that exact one, it would be like 40 to 50. So you're always better putting a new chain on, saving your cassette, saving your chain rings, saving your jockeys a little bit longer and then, yeah, get more life out of your bike. Next, I would go... Number three. Number three. Now, this one is, it's, it's, I would probably put these two together. So I'm gonna be a bit cheeky and have two together, mm -hmm. but I'd say a chain whip and a good chain whip. The amount of times I've seen people buy the cheap one from middle aisles in some supermarkets and they just snap on them or uh, something like that and a good um, cassette tool um, with, you know especially with more turbo trainers in people's houses now and stuff like that you're going to end up at some point wanting to swap your, your cassettes from bike to bike or you know you might want to be doing a, a longer ride and put a bigger cassette on or something like that so they're not crazy expensive but stick to a proper brand um, and yeah chain whip and cassette tool. I think you can class that as one because you can't really do no. it with one of them. You, you need both of them. You can also use a cassette tool for changing rotors uh, yeah. as well. So again, if you kind of, you know, swapping wheels and one bike's got a 160 and one bike's got a 140, you can use it for that as well most of the time. Next one. This is number this two. This number two, yeah, is a torque wrench. If you can only buy one, by the middle size. They do a bigger one, they do a, a little clicker. Again, you don't have to use this brand, but this brand we use. Um, 
But if you buy a proper torque wrench, it'll, chances are it'll come with all the bits that you need. Um, and it just means that every time you move your saddle or you move your position of your handle, you know, handlebars or hoods or anything like that, you can look online, just type in whatever brand you've got of shifters or bars and you can find the torque settings and just do it to the right torque. The amount of times I get it where people have snapped a bolt or the seat post has slipped down or something like that, yeah, I would definitely go for a torque wrench. How does it work? So, normally on your stem, for example, there'll be a little, it'll normally say somewhere, does it say on the, the MV ones? Yeah. They're at the back there, but you can't really read it that easily. It says 5.5 newton meters. 5.5, so you'd basically just, you've got a little dial on it, and you'll just turn this, nor on most of them, they're quite similar. You just turn this to, say for example, just under six there, and then, so you'll just put the right head on it, pop it in, and then, when it bends like that, that means it's at the right torque setting, basically, so that's, whoever did this before, did it to the right setting. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah. Again, especially on off-road bikes, things do rattle loose, you know, it's definitely good that if you do like a big epic ride, um, like Chris does a lot, I would kind of, this is something I would check again once a month. In the mountain bike world, there's a big thing of like, um, they call it like a, the five mil check, where they'll go around with a five mil Allen key and they'll just check that all the bolts are tight in linkages and stuff like that because things rattle loose. It's the same now with the rise of gravel, just check your bolts and nothing should come loose. I have something to add on this one, especially for bike packing stuff. Mm. Silka make a amazing okay. mini torque wrench system. It is very expensive, but it is amazing and it is the, about the size of my wallet, actually. Ah, okay. It's about that big, maybe smaller than that. But it's a mini torque wrench, and that's what I take on bike packing trips. Yeah, well, the torque wrench I use the most in the bike shop is a, is a clicker. We call it a clicker because this is already set to 5.5, but this one you can change it to six or four or whatever, and you just put it in, and if it clicks like that, it's at the right setting. So. I used to travel a lot for racing and I would quite often just take one of these with me because you can do your seat post, you can do your stem, chances are they're all you need when you travel, mm -hmm. um, if you put it in a bike box or something, but yeah, little clicker, but if you can only have one, go for the slightly bigger one with all the little bits because you can do everything then pretty much. Okay, what is your most important tool to have at home? It's the tool I use the most and most people use the most a proper good quality set of Allen keys or Torx keys. I'm, again, putting them in with the same thing. You know, some some brands sort of will use Torx keys. I would say a lot of stems, for example, have Torx on the front. Uh, difference being that they're a little star shape versus your sort of hexagon type shape. But yeah, if you get a proper set, again, if you go cheap, the ends will round off and then you'll end up rounding the bolts and stuff like that invest just a little bit more you don't need to buy the you know the really expensive brands and stuff you know you don't need to have what we have in a workshop because you're not going to be doing it every single day but if you buy a good set of allen keys you may never need another set so i would invest in a good set and chances are yeah you'll keep them forever you'll round less bolts and yeah. i will i will add to this as well the tolerances in terms of the actual size yeah. on expensive tools is way accurate way more accurate yeah, than definitely. it would be on a cheaper set definitely. so if you've got a, a five mil allen key head it will be five mil from park tool yeah if it's a something you bought off the and a eBay, lot of these brands be... as well the bigger brands will offer a warranty on it so for example if you did whatever snap an allen key I've seen some big, strong uh, mechanics in the past do some damage to Allen key sets. You can just send them back to some of these brands and they'll send you a new one. That's also something to be, you know, we go for bikes sometimes with lifetime warranties on frames. You can also get an Allen key set with like a proper warranty on it as well. So, yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. No problem. If you've realized that I'm sitting down a lot, it's not because I'm lazy, it's because I'm still sort of getting over the operation, which some of you might know about means I can't really walk. Um, but if you have any ideas for things you want me to ask Jimmy, please drop a comment below and we'll do more videos like this with some sort of quick mechanic tips and stuff like that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Cheers, mate. No worries.